Today's video is going to be a three week review on the Cuddy Back Cuddy Link system. It's a Cuddy Back K camera. It's the $200 version of the cellular camera. As far as the review goes, Right off the bat, first things first is it's you're paying $200 for a camera that doesn't work unless you're also paying at least $10 a month. As far as the setup goes, the setup was pretty difficult. All of it was done on a trail camera. There's a lot of buttons, a lot of modes, and I had to read the manual quite a bit because I didn't understand what a lot of the stuff meant when you're looking at their system. They have their own wording for a lot of the phrases and so on. But once I did get it set up, it was working. You know, I took it out, I believe, yeah, sent me images on that first day. In the Stealth Cam video, I stated that I was going to do a review at two weeks, but I ended up deciding to do a review at three weeks just because I wasn't getting a whole lot of, a lot of images. There was a full moon. It was in the high 80s, close to 90s almost every day for like two weeks straight. So the deer movement was really minimal. Just wasn't seeing the deer activity that I needed to see to, to give it a proper review. So therefore, I just... Waited on another week, got some more pictures before I could see how it actually would really work and so on. First two weeks. You're looking at, you're looking at me in a disappointed face. Am I? For the first two weeks, I couldn't even get the video to work. I couldn't get it to make take videos and I kept messing with it and messing with it. And the button set system is so sensitive. If you just hit the wrong button one time, you gotta go through the whole system again. It's just, it's not easy to do. You know, with, without it having an app or anything like that, and and I understand cameras didn't have apps for a very long time, but now that I have the app, I'm spoiled. It's so much easier fixing the camera and changing the settings and so on when you have an app. It says literally it says photo, video, done. A lot of times I can't tell if it's changed to the video mode or if it's just still in picture mode. It's hard for me to figure out their system. In a way, it's hard to give a a really good review on this because I don't know the camera system. I don't know Cuddybacks. People that have been using Cuddybacks probably can go right through this real quick and they can get all this taken care of. But for me, and for for some of this new coming in, this review is mainly for somebody that's interested in buying a Cuddyback camera that has never had a Cuddyback camera because I found it very difficult to use. And I was really hoping that this was gonna be like the camera. I was like, man, this is an awesome system. You can hook up multiple cameras to this one cellular camera and then you know, you, you get all those pictures from all those cameras for one price. Hands down, the plan, when you really think about, you know, what you're getting, being able to use multiple cameras with this one camera that sends you images to your email address, hands down, it's the best play. You, you can't beat it. If you have intentions on buying a cutty bag, you are going to have to open this. You're going to have to read this. You're going to have to figure out all the little things that it is talking about. It has different channels it has different locations it has different commands i mean there's all types of things that you have to do within the camera to make this camera work properly i don't know i just want to turn on the camera and be done if i have to do a whole bunch of research just to figure out how to use the camera it's, it's too hard for me i'll take a small less than one megapixel picture send it to your email it also saves a that same version in a larger megapixel on your camera. And then, if you have it in video mode, it will also take a video. I, I understand, I think for a lot of people, this really isn't that important. For me, making YouTube videos, and I know like other people, there's a lot of people making YouTube videos for hunting nowadays, um, a lot of people doing television shows. I feel like that's an important feature to have because you're gonna wanna use that better image in those videos that you're creating. So if you're a YouTuber, if you're making television shows and you watch this and you, you say, I need a camera that's gonna send me the image and then also I wanna be able to have that better megapixel image for my videos, this camera will do that for you. So it uses the 6D batteries. So it is very large, it's very big. The antennas on it are probably a good six to seven inches tall. The camera's probably around 10 inches, nine to 10 inches. It weighs a couple pounds so you know if you have a really big property and you're setting up this system on your property with multiple cameras your backpack's gonna be pretty heavy in the beginning and if you gotta go on a long hike it's it's gonna be it's gonna be heavy I and mean, there's no getting around it these cameras are big they're bulky but they work you know I, I turned it on I haven't had it not work 
It works with up to a 32 gigabyte memory card. So it uses SD cards. In the manual it says you can use a four to 32 gigabyte SD card. I couldn't get a 32 gigabyte SD card to work in it. I, it wouldn't send pictures, it wouldn't take pictures, it just would not work. So I changed it to a 16 gigabyte SD card and I was able to get the camera to work. It's been working ever since. So I have two SD cards that I alternate between weeks basically is what I've been doing. Now I've had it out there for three weeks. I've had to change the battery once. Here's the cutty back. As you see, it's, it's a really big camera. I mean, it's, it's big. Um, I compared it to one of those starter logs that you buy in the stores and it's pretty close. It's pretty close. The one thing I forgot is that this camera uses, has this lock nut here. So in order to get the batteries out, I got to have a screwdriver, which I didn't bring, but luckily I had some scissors. So hopefully I can get it out with my scissors. It'd be great if they had like a small, like attachment so I could just clamp a screwdriver to it. If I could clamp a screwdriver to it, that would help tremendously in me forgetting because I'm a forgetful person. Cut it back if you watch this. Think about that, that's a recommendation for you. Make it so it has like a flip up latch on it. That yeah, flipped up, then it wouldn't be so bad. The camera was working pretty good and then I turned the video function on and the batteries just started to die. The last image the camera took before it died was like 157 and then there was like 15 videos on it. So it was around, around 180 images and the batteries were dead. So Cuddyback does make a solar panel kit for their trail cameras. I would highly recommend it. Now, I'm a little confused on it because I've been trying to find information on it with the Cuddyback's website. and the wording's a little off to me because I don't understand exactly what it's saying. There's a couple different options you have. You have the solar panel and then they have a, an external battery pack. You can take the external battery pack, it uses D batteries and it will connect to the back of your camera or it connects to the, whatever you have the camera set on and then you connect the camera to that. And if you have the solar panel and you use rechargeable D batteries in it, the solar panel will charge those D batteries. But for some reason it says something about it, the solar panel has AA batteries, 12 AA batteries. But it doesn't say if the solar panel recharges them. So I'm, I'm a little confused as to that setup. So I don't really know if you just buy the solar panel, if it's gonna charge the batteries that are in the solar panel or, or whatever. That was a little confusing to me. I tried to find videos on YouTube to look it up so I could get a, a proper answer for you. I tried to go to Cuddyback's website. Um, I didn't call anybody or anything like that. So if the batteries are chargeable inside the solar panel, it's 59 bucks. 59 bucks is the same as the HME battery pack. In the beginning, when I set up the camera, I thought that the camera would not hook up to the HME, and it won't. There's a lot of companies that make products that only work with their accessories. And I just thought that, that this is one of them, and it probably is. It is a nine volt system, and it's not a 12 volt system. So obviously the HME is not gonna work with the Cuddy back because it would fry the system. Sorry for my kids screaming in the background. They're, my oldest is here, and so they're playing. If the solar panel doesn't charge the batteries that are inside it, or doesn't have a charging system, whatnot, it's called the Cuddyback Cuddy Power Battery Booster. And that is $19 and then you can connect the solar panel to it. It will charge the batteries inside. So it's a little bit extra, it's a, it's a lot extra actually, that you have to work with. Price wise, it's not too bad. The solar panel is a pretty big solar panel, so it should have no issues, you know, gathering the sun to keep that camera rolling without having to buy any more batteries. When you set up your camera, what they recommend you do is they say to just create a new Gmail account. And then anything that comes to your email is just gonna be all cutting back stuff. So I didn't end up doing that. I just used the Gmail that I have, but in my iPhone I can make certain emails be VIP. So basically any email that comes to my phone from cutting back is VIP. All I have to do is click my VIP button. It's, it's the only VIP email I have. I don't, nobody else I know is a VIP. So cutting back, you, you got that wrapped up. So it doesn't look like any pictures were taken. We had a huge thunderstorm system come through, so it doesn't surprise me that in, no pictures were taken. None of my other cameras actually sent me pictures last night either. They were just hunched down trying to survive in, in the thunderstorm. So in the VIP, you can see there's images that come up right here. This one was sent to me at 4.55 a.m., so a little buck right there. Then we got another one. A couple more deer, and you can click on it. But this is pretty much how you have to do it. If you use Google Drive, you know, 
you go into your Google Drive, all these pictures will be, you know, organized and stuff. And that's probably why they recommend that you use your own account because it's not going to be mixed in with grandma's picture of her dog or, you know, um, your cousin's picture of their kid that you've seen a thousand times. You know, it does work. It's, it's a decently good little system. Um, the picture quality, if you look here in the picture quality, the picture quality on my phone is actually pretty good. You know, you, you look at that right there, you can see this doe, you can see detail on her face. It's probably about the same as the stealth cam. And then there's not a whole lot of detail in the in the image there. You know, basically just tells you the time, you know, what time it was taken, what date it was taken. This is actually a day off for some reason. I don't know why my calendar's off. But that's the way I do it. After seeing how this works, I would probably recommend setting up a, a new Gmail account, just like they say to do. If this is the route you're going to go, I mean, that's definitely what I would do. Especially if you're running multiple cameras, you're going to get multiple images. The other thing, too, is you can set up, I think, up to 12 emails for this camera. So if you got deer camp guys, you got 12 guys that go to your deer camp, every single one of them can get emails from the cutting back. You don't have to sit here and forward emails to all your deer camp buddies. I didn't use it on a multi-camera system. I just used the one camera. I was, I was basically, this review is just for the cellular portion of this. When I wanted to change the settings, when I wasn't getting videos on SD cards, you know, I spent like 10 minutes out working on this camera, trying to get this thing to work in the field. 30 yards from a blind that my daughter was hunting. I did it after the youth hunt, but it's beside the point because the season starts in three or four days and I don't want to be out there messing with this camera throughout the season. Then I can start trying to pattern the bucks that I'm looking to harvest this year. You know, I, I just want to be able to look at this system, know the times they're coming through, when to try to get in the stand, when to try to get out of the stand. And if I have to mess with the camera on all the time, it's just keeping me in the field and it kind of defeats the purpose of having this camera. They have like one of the most advanced and most least advanced systems all in one. To be honest, I don't have a whole lot of images. Where I had this set up, I didn't get as much traction as I was hoping. Now, so here's a night image, 6.30 in the morning. So it's really not even night, this is dusk. I find that the night images are pretty grainy. They're not as high quality as, as some of the other cameras that I'm working with. Uh, I can still see the detail in the antlers, you know, I can see which buck that is but then here you know it's 653 so the sun is partly up it's still using the infrared lights you know even with the sun partially up i believe that this is the buck that came in within 70 yards of us in Gemma's video so if you haven't seen that video hit this link right here now here's a daylight picture uh this is 809 p.m so this is pretty close to sunset now you can see the details, you can see your ribs a little bit, you can see the spots on the dough. To be honest, I'm really not that impressed by the image. It's it's okay, but it's, and I guess I'm just used to working with these kind of cameras here with big sensors and so on. 20 megapixel on a four thirds camera or full frame or whatever is a lot different than a 20 megapixel on a trail camera or a cell phone. For a lot of people, it's really not about how good the quality of the picture is, it's just it's a scouting tool and it is scouting right here you have the image you can see what's going on like i said i didn't get a lot of activity at this camera so i'm sorry that i don't have a lot of options for the pictures here it was a bad setup i had it in a bad location so it's my own fault now here's one at 6 52 a.m so this is a couple days later so the sun might be a little bit brighter on this day but it's not using the infrared there's enough detail to figure out what this deer is i can look at this deer i can say okay this is so and so buck i don't name my bucks i name my pets but you know even there you look at this image there's not a whole lot of detail between the trees in the background and the antlers there it's kind of hard to tell the difference but this here, in the distance here, you got two different bucks. One's a smaller buck, one's a little bit bigger of a buck. And you know, that buck's probably 50 yards away and you can still see the antlers. So there's enough detail so you can understand, okay, okay, this buck is coming in at this point. He's this far away from the camera. And actually right there, where that buck is standing is a broadside shot for the stand that I have on the fence row. All right, so this is how the videos work. So this is a night video. It's really grainy. The quality is, is pretty crappy, to be honest. And it always has a little cutty back introduction at the beginning, which I found amusing. And then right there it is again. When I saw these, these videos, I was really surprised in the quality. The quality just doesn't seem to be very good. And then here's a daytime video. I didn't get the video function for this camera working until two weeks. So I only have about a week's worth of videos. I assume the battery must be going dead at this point because there's little red dots that are coming around the deer. That's pretty much it as far as the images that go from this camera, like I said. I'm not really impressed by the image quality. The daytime image quality, the, the nighttime image quality is really not, not good. I'm still contemplating whether I would buy this. And for monthly cost purposes, yes. 
it doesn't have an app, which is frustrating. It's not as much about being able to see the pictures on the app, it's more about being able to control the camera with the app. I feel like that's a really big downfall. I mean, that, that really lowers the score for me. The plan is probably like, a, you know, it's, it's a five out of five. I mean, honestly, it's a five stars out of five just for the plan because you're running multiple cameras on one plan. So yeah, I, I think it's gonna be, you know, a two and a half, two and three quarters, three on this camera. Will I buy it for the situation I'm in now? I won't buy another one. Just because I don't think I would buy it doesn't mean you guys shouldn't buy it. I'm just letting you know what I think of the camera system. You know, if you, if you have a farm or you have a spot and you're only gonna be running one camera, this is definitely not the camera or the system for you. If you have a farm and you wanna run multiple cameras, this may be the system for you. Don't get fooled by that initial $750 cost or the $200 cost of one camera or whatnot. You're gonna have to spend more money on solar panels. These this camera died quicker than any other camera that I have, to be honest. I think it's a three star out of five star camera system. I'm leaning more towards two and a half, to be honest. In the next camera video, it's gonna be the comparison video, and then you guys can really decide you know, what camera you're getting. I'm sorry that I'm getting this so close to the, to the Michigan season. I know other seasons have already started, and I really wanted to do a comparison video with you guys to have plenty of time. I just wasn't getting the photos to make an honest decision. Thanks for watching. Comment down below if I forgot anything or if there's any other information you're interested in knowing about this camera and I didn't say it in this video. Hit that like button, subscribe, I gotta go.